Are you here protesting? Are you here marching with us? Yes, or are you? Absolutely. Tell me why you're here. Shit. I'm here because all violence is connected and the state has been killing black men and black people and people of color in general at a disproportionate rate. And we live in a country that was built on the backs of slaves to advance, you know, people that look like me and it can't go on. The politics as usual can't go on. It's a matter of life and death. It's as simple as that. It is. But life or death for who? Who do you think? I mean, I think obviously people of color. It's a matter of death every day. But I think all marginalized groups are reaching a point in our society where intersectionality has to be practiced. We have to realize all violence is connected. LBGT, you know, they have to stand for this. We have to stand for LBGT, everything. Like, all violence and oppression is connected. But this is at a head. This is becoming like an everyday occurrence. This is, uh, this is next level, so. So what do you think has to happen? Because you realize that cop killing blacks are at a crazy rate. What what do you think? Because I don't see a lot of people that look like you out here. I don't know what it's gonna take for mainstream white America to to catch on. I think identifying academically terms like, you know, white fragility, derailment, um, personalization and about dissecting those academically and that's sort of happening in university circles right now is a way of intellectually disarming white supremacy and I think that has to happen but I don't think that can happen fast enough I think our society could potentially collapse before um, before that you know before other ways help you know I, I really I'm not being articulate right now I'm angry I'm tired this is like I know uh, I was gonna ask you it's, so there's no easy answer saw, when you saw when you woke up this morning and saw, if you saw the video of the most recent victim, what was your first thought? My first thought is that I live in a, a savage society and that, that this man, that I, I, you know, it's like, what is the right going to say now? He complied. He was a public school teacher. He a completely productive member of society, non-gang affiliate, nothing. Like, they can't nothing. say anything. There's nothing. Legal, you know, gun owner, you know, and he told them, you know, hey, I have my gun, you know, and he did everything he's supposed to do. So, to me, there is no, I have no time for excuse making. I have no time for there being a respectful dialogue with white denial. Like, I don't think, wow. it's, I don't think it's functional. White denial. Yeah, I don't think what it's. What is white denial to you? White denial to me is automatically jumping to to defend or excuse these incidents as, out of a matter of own comfortability because people don't want to think they live in a society that that's it's that violently racist people don't want to think that that's the case so people yeah because they, they know that they're responsible for it and that they benefit from it and that they're implicitly condoning it every time they, they live and they don't burn this shit to the ground because i don't know Honestly, like, denial is so strong and it's so endemic and it brings back the conversation of like, how do you get these people to come around? How do you get them to see? And uh, I, don't, I, don't think, I don't think catering to that demographic is even productive anymore. Like, I don't think it's worthwhile. It's a demographic that's in denial. Yeah. But if we don't keep them on denial, how do we change it? Can't wait for that. I, 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 think, I think either white America is going to change or violence is going to happen. Like real violence, like like cops are gonna start getting clapped and shit like that. And I don't, I don't want to see that. I'm not advocating I don't that. See that. You know, I'm not advocating that. I want to be very clear. But I also think that we have to be realistic about the times that we're living in, the acuteness of the problem, and the acuteness of the the challenge of trying to get other people to accept that it's a problem at all. Is it? On days like this, it feels like it's insurmountable. Like, it I, I, I don't have a lot of hope, honestly. I, as a white person in America, I don't have a lot of hope. So if you, as a white person in America, don't have hope, imagine how we feel. When, I can't. when we wake up in the morning, and the first thing I see after my morning prayer is that another man is shot and killed. I, I can't even. I can't even. I've been feeling hopeless, helpless, and heartless. I don't know what other. I, I don't even. 
I don't have words. The people need to arm themselves. I think people need to train their kids. I think people should know the law and stuff like that, but I'm not into the culture of victim blaming. I'm into the culture of reform, you know? And that's what we yeah. need So reform. electing progressive politicians and not backing down to the institutions that keep progressive politicians back, like the Sanders campaign, not not just backing the DNC because we're scared of Donald Trump or whatever that is. Whatever machinery is happening in the U.S. political system that allows for progressive candidates to be systematically disenfranchised, voter election fraud, all this kind of stuff, we can't just endorse that. We need to support them on a congressional level. We need to support them on a local level. We need to support people that are vocal about the role that police play in the lives of citizenry and people of color specifically. And that absolutely has to be a central campaigning issue for anybody that has an ounce of humanity in them, white, black, otherwise. White, black, or otherwise. So I've noticed that some of my white friends have found it difficult being around me. If you could say anything, what, what would you say? What do you say? What have you said? What, what are your thoughts? It's, I mean, it's just like they don't want to identify with words like privilege and with words like that. It used to like words like that before I understood used to make me feel defensive. You know, I didn't understand. So for people like that, I would just tell them, just listen, sit with your uncomfortability. Sit with it. Why are you so uncomfortable? Like, where is that coming from? And it's because you're not OK with with this or that you need to you need to really like get to the root of it because you're allowed to just check out of that conversation anytime you feel like it you know as a white person you can just leave you can just leave the room and, and not worry about racism you know so understanding that not everybody is afforded that capability is central to understanding why other people are living under so much stress because there is no escape you, you live in this situation so Right. Just for people Thank to understand you can take that hat off and have compassion for people that can't. So, because everybody is loving your words and that you're here, tell everybody who you are. You want them to follow you on social media. Any last words you want to share? Sure. Um, don't, uh, don't be apathetic. Every time this stuff happens, get more angry. Don't get numb. I don't know, man. Uh, if you're white, check yourself. Stop talking and start listening. It's easy for me to say after talking a whole lot, but like straight up, like. But now you're doing something. Yeah. Now you're getting involved. Yeah. I, was, I mean, you don't have a choice if you have a heart and you a conscience. See what's going on out here at all. Like even, even a little bit. The, the man fired into that car today, and he didn't give a fuck that there's a little girl. Behind them, I mean, the police should know. Like, someone's in the line of fire. Someone's in the. Someone's right behind this person. They know exit wounds and they spread and they know all this bullshit. But it didn't matter at that point. We didn't give a fuck. Fucking animals, man. We're, we're not talking about people that are, are worth respect or worth anything. It's uh, it makes me shake. Makes me cry. Makes me cry too. Makes me shake. What's your name? Uh, my name is Brian. Uh, I'm a chef in Charlotte, North Carolina. I do plant-based foods and stuff. I, I post a lot of stuff like about this kind of thing and, and you know just how to try to be healthy and stress-free when you can. Um, I'm on Instagram at Calling Chef Cat. Um, find my food is Terra Flora. But uh, yeah, man. Hit me up. Let me know when this is going on. You know, like we will. fuck the bullshit. I'll be I'll be out. I'll bring folk. We will. Not all right. Thank you for talking to me. Yeah. Thank you for caring. And thank you for not being in denial and being courageous enough to come out here and be a part of this. Yeah. It, it means thank, a lot. Thank you for Seriously. making this a thing at all. You know, like to me, it's like you know, we're white in America, dude. Like. I don't. I'm sorry. I'm. Thank you. It's the all sense good. of it is felt. But it's all yeah, good. Yeah, yeah. It's, can I hug you right now? Like, yes, yeah, you can absolutely. Hug me. Thank you. Thank you because you care. Yeah.